This is the David Conley Show. Online at bcradionetwork.com. All right. How's that for an annoying introduction? <laughs> Welcome. Nice to see you here. Um, we have a few things to talk about and it's very nice to see you. I'm going to get started straight away. Today I'd like to speak about Docker and I would also like to speak about the Codeigniter online shop. Now, um, I, uh, I'll start with the online shop if I may. Some of you folks know that I launched a series on YouTube, Build an Online Shop, and it was 135 videos. Many of those videos were over 40 minutes long, and I believe that it was the biggest web development tutorial series on YouTube, just by my own estimation. Now, uh, a few days ago, I decided to delete the whole lot, and today, an email came in from Vincent, and Vincent says, uh, I'll just give you highlights. He says, hello, Sir David Connolly. Sir David Connolly. I like that. Well, I don't actually. I've certainly never been called that. Anyway, I know you're a really busy person, but please take, two, please, please take some time to read through this. You have been really helpful to many people, uh, etc., especially with the free videos that you've uh, created. I know that this might not be important to you at the moment, but please try to see this from my angle as someone you have helped even though we have not met. He says, I found your online shop tutorials and I loved it. And since then I've tried to study and follow through your advice and method of coding. I know that I'm supposed to join Speed Coding Academy, first mention, okay, to get the best from you and that is my target, honestly. But at the moment, I'm still trying to find my feet as a young person in terms of the financial costs involved. I am convinced uh, with the wealth of information and tools that you're giving out, the price is worth it. But please try and be considerate to, to me now because I need your help. I have studied with uh, using your free videos and I'm now on video 97 in the CI shop. He says, and honestly, I love completing all my tasks and I don't want to waste this opportunity I've found with your videos, so I request that you please, at your free time, grant me access to those videos, especially 97 to 125. You don't know how much help you have rendered to me. Please try and be considerate to me. Thank you. What a nice guy. That's a nice guy, right? And a nice email. And I appreciate that, Vincent. Let me give you the lay of the land. The Code Igniter online shop series was good. I liked the way that I covered it, and there's a lot of things I would do exactly the same. Encryption, security, authentication, uh, the way it processes forms, the syntax, the database structure, the site structure. I mean, it was really, really good stuff in there. Now, here's a challenge, because this dude has got what he's up to 97 and then the things disappeared that's a heavy vibe isn't it now i would love to be able to go well here they are there they are back good luck vincent the truth is i don't think i've got them i really think that i've deleted them now in case some of you folks are thinking, well, what a blundering idiot. Let me just give you my own perspective here, okay? About 14 years ago, I built a website for a very well-known martial arts guy. And in doing so, I ended up meeting up with some of the absolute VIPs of the martial arts world. I met up with... Uh, people like Jesse Glover, Bruce Lee's first student, Ted Wong, Bruce Lee's last student, and everybody's like, yeah, I trained with Bruce Lee, but these are people who, you get Bruce Lee books, and these are all the people training with Bruce Lee, they really, really were in Bruce Lee's inner circle. And I remember I met Ted Wong, 
and I was speaking to him one time and um, there was a seminar going on and I'm just I was doing web work so he was just sitting and I'm just hanging about and I thought I'll, have, I'll speak to Ted Wong you know so I was speaking to him this is like Bruce Lee's very very close friend and uh, one of the things that I chatted about was the fight that Bruce Lee had. Bruce Lee had one documented fight that, you know, there was a timekeeper, there was a referee, there was an audience. It actually happened, right? And it was a fight where he had, where he fought a guy by the name of Wong Jack Man. Now, I'm not going to give you the full story behind it. You can look that up. Needless to say, there was some kind of dispute because Bruce Lee was teaching non-Chinese people and this rival martial arts club were upset at this. They handed in a scroll and they said, look, we're challenging you. And if we win or if our man wins, you need to stop teaching non-Asians about Kung Fu. So anyway, Bruce Lee accepted, he did the fight. And what happened thereafter is kind of a mystery. And there's all sorts of stories about it. But Ted Wong, the guy, and I do that because he was sitting right here he was at that fight and so I was eager to get the inside scoop and uh, as a matter of fact I ended up I hooked up with Wong Jack Man's team and I got his side of the story as well I was into the research you know and what Ted Wong told me was interesting I said what exactly happened and he said well basically there were a group of us and I can't remember if it was on a rooftop or an alleyway or whatever but they started fighting and he says it went on for about two minutes and by the end of the fight Bruce Lee was just on top of this guy doing what's called straight blasts which means punching straight like a like a locomotion you know <laughs> and uh, Bruce Lee won and he won decisively now after the fight Ted Wong and others were like yeah this is great congratulations everything's brilliant well done but what Ted Wong told me is that Bruce Lee was actually deeply depressed after that fight. He was miserable and the students could not understand why. They were saying, you've just defeated this incredible grand master, a stunning victory. You've also won the right to keep your martial arts school open. Why are you being so gloomy, Bruce? And Bruce Lee said, that fight went on for much longer than it should have went on for. He said, by the end of that fight, I was absolutely exhausted. I had virtually nothing left. And he said, that fight exposed so many weaknesses in what I'm doing that I'm gonna have to stop doing traditional martial arts. So Bruce Lee, after that fight, abandoned Wing Chun which is a traditional Kung Fu system. He abandoned a few of the other martial arts, the traditional stuff, and he invented a brand new martial art by the name of Jeet Kune Do. This was different. So he got his footwork from Muhammad Ali. He got other uh, aspects. He was interested in fencing and he looked at the way that Olympic fencers would stand and how they would react quickly. And he took little pieces from here, there and everywhere and he put it together and he created this incredible new martial art, like I say, by the name of Jeet Kune Do. And in doing so, his target was clear. He said, if somebody ends up in a confrontational situation, I don't want to be dancing about for two minutes. I want it to be over in three seconds. And that is the goal of Jeet Kune Do. That's what that particular martial art attempts to do. Whether or not it succeeds, I don't know. I'm just a web guy, I'm not into Kung Fu. Just giving you the information. Now, why do I say this? Well, it's because I feel the same way. I actually feel the same way. <laughs> I feel the same way about Code Igniter. I feel the same way about all of the frameworks in general. I respect them. I've spent many years using them and I'm grateful for them. They have shaped my life and I'm, I'm all gratitude. I'm not anti-anything. I love them all. But 
I just don't think that they are efficient. I think I can do better. I think you can do better. So, although I've deleted all of those videos, I haven't gone anywhere. There's a lot of people leaving comments like, oh, it's been really nice knowing you and thanks for the memories. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. And let me say this to you, Vincent. Early next year, sometime between January and probably March, I'm going to release a new framework. I give you these promises. It's going to be really easy. You're not going to have to learn anything. It'll use all the same syntax as CodeIgniter. I'm not going to rewrite it all the time. It's going to be stable and you're going to feel right at home. And when that framework comes out, I'm going to redo the entire online shop series. But I have a feeling you're not going to need 35 videos. I think you're going to find that this new framework allows you to do the same job but much, much faster. I'm shaking the table, aren't I? I need to stop doing that. It's going to allow you to do things much faster. Now, you are on 97 and some people may say that that's a tragedy. But listen, I made the course. I know what's coming up. All you would have got was payment gateways, generating PDF invoices, AngularJS, which you'll never use anyway, anyway, in jQuery Mobile, which you'll probably never use anyway. So the stuff that you've got up until now, that foundational knowledge, that is still valid. In fact, that's the gold. That's the good stuff. So trust me on this. You have not wasted your time. If you've really made it to 97, you are an excellent web developer. In fact, I'd like you to please get in touch, give me your details, because I'm not short of work. And if you are looking for something, then I might be able to pass a little job or two on for you. Trust me, you have good skills. It's not a defeat. All I'm asking is that you just give me a little bit of time because I know what's coming up and it's going to be good. Is that fair enough? All right. So there we are with that one. Now, before I go, I want to say a couple of words about Docker. I was uh, Over the years, I've heard a lot of people speaking about Docker. You need to learn Docker. And what about Docker? Hey, Docker, don't you like Docker? What about Docker? Well, I had a chance to finally have a look at Docker. It looks like a similar vibe to Vagrant and Puffet or whatever it's called and all of that stuff. And it's basically a vibe that lets you switch between different versions of different programming languages and whatnot. So I had a chance to check it out and I wanted to just give you my opinion if that's okay very, very quickly. Basically, I'm not into it. Now, me saying I'm not into it does not mean that it's rubbish. It does not mean that you should agree with me. And it certainly does not mean that you should stop using it if you like it. If you like it, if it makes you smile, that's awesome. Bless you. And may you continue to enjoy Docker. But here's the vibe. I've been a developer since 1996. I've built well over a thousand sites. Top of Google for seven years for the phrase website repairs. I was one second on Google in 2007 for the phrase web development. And that was before Google went all regional. For a while, the only site that ranked higher was Wikipedia. And over the last 22, almost 23 years now, I've worked on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sites. I reckon I've built over a thousand. If you count repairs, it has to be one and a half thousand, maybe up to two thousand. So this is a guy who definitely, you would imagine, would benefit from having a system that allowed me to switch between different versions. So about an hour ago, for example, I was working on a website that's 18 years old and it does have some older code in it and maybe something like Docker could be good. Let me give you my own perspective on this and it's just one person. I don't use Docker. I just use ZAMP or WAMP or LAMP. I like one-click installations. I don't like anything that uses the command line interface because it gives me anxiety attacks, <laughs> okay? I just feel like it's a step backwards. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it for some reason. If you like it, that's fine, but I'm just not into it. 
I like things to be really easy, you know, and I don't see any virtue in hanging about in the command line interface and making out like that makes you a real developer. If I have a scenario where a client has an older version of some technology, take the site that I'm, I was working on today because I'm still a working web developer, right? I, I love this industry and I'm still doing this, okay? This is not reminiscing. So whenever a client comes along, like the one I was dealing with today, and they have an older version, let's say an older version of PHP, an older version of MySQL, and they need some work done. Do you know what I do? I do one of two things. I either rewrite the website application completely, in which case I don't need to worry about all of that stuff, or I head over to PC World and for 400 quid, I get one of these beauties here. This is obviously a Mac Mini. You pick them up for about 400, you'll get them on eBay for about 200. It is performant, reliable, it's an entire computer in a little box. It's also very quiet, very power efficient. And then I put this on the table and I plug in my HDMI, my monitor, and my keyboard and all of that stuff and I do the work and I have this thing loaded up with the versions that that client needs. And then if another client comes along and they have another um, app that requires some particular old version of something that's really, really awkward, do you know what I do, folks? That's right, you know what's coming up. I head back to PC World, I get another one of these little beauties, I load this up with the stuff that that client needs, then I stack them together and I write a little app for scanning the stock market and doing alerts and trades and stuff and I stack them up and I switch it on in the middle of the night and it generates revenue as I sleep. That's what I do. And by the way, even if I wasn't going to keep the stuff, these things hold their value. You can sell them and get them pretty much just what you paid, you know? They really hold their value and you can get PC versions. Look around, there's plenty of them. And you can get PC versions. It's a market actually that's really picking up. I don't know what they call them. Is it mini computers or micro computers or something like that? But this, this is the vibe for me. And, and that's what I'm doing. I just stack up on those. And why not? Is that not a lot nicer than faffing about with the command line? Anyway, <laughs> maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But it's something that I like. And all I have to do is just swap the cables at the back. Like I put my monitor on the other one and it's like, okay, I'm on that version. I flip and I'm on that. And why not? Why not? Can somebody tell me what's wrong with that? Anyway. That's pretty much, uh, I think, us for tonight. And I mentioned that, not to show off, not to say, hey, this guy's got money or something. All I'm trying to do here is give you a different perspective. I'm trying to introduce you to a different way of thinking about web development. I am the guy who believes that web development should be really easy and really fun and really simple. Stand by me and next year we will prosper. We will have a fantastic year and so will our clients. You take care.